Hey everyone, it's Chris, Director of Product Management at Platform9. In this video, we're going to take a tour of the product, learn how to create a Kubernetes cluster, and then deploy an application using Argo CD. So let's jump in. Logging into Platform9 is easy. You can either use a local account that's part of the SaaS management plane that you're using, or configure single sign-on and log in with SSO. Today, I'm just gonna be logging in with a local username and password. The first time you log in, you're gonna land on our main dashboard. And obviously you're gonna have no clusters or nodes and no cloud accounts. Our cloud accounts are the providers for AWS, Azure, and Google. You can have multiple of each and create clusters in multiple of each. So let's start there. Drilling in, I'm gonna land on our cloud provider page. I'm gonna click add Pro cloud provider and I'm gonna use AWS for today's demonstrations. If you're new to Platform 9, you can download our IAM policy directly from this screen. That you can then upload into AWS to make sure that you can assign the correct policies to a role. If you want to make sure that the account that you're using to access Platform 9 has the correct privileges, you can download the CLI and run the check cloud command. I'm going to go ahead and create this cloud provider now. I'm going to call it AWS Dev and let me get the access key and secret key. Once I put these in, I can click create cloud provider. This is going to go and see if we have the appropriate access and if so, click create cloud provider. Next, we're gonna set some defaults so you don't have to choose this every time you wanna make a cluster. My favorite place is US West one. I am not going to use a Route 53 domain, and I am going to set my default uh, SSH key now, so then I don't have to choose it each time I'm setting up a cluster. So with these all set, I'm just gonna scroll down and click complete, it's easy as that. The next step we're gonna do is to create a new cluster. That can be done from the clusters page or here, from the dashboard. Either places, clicking the plus symbol, it's gonna take you to our create new cluster wizard. I'm just gonna collapse our menu in here so we get a little bit more screen real estate and choose AWS. Now, it's two options. One click is really good for getting up and going fast. Um, but I'm gonna go through the advanced cluster setup which will show you some of the more customizable options as we go through this deployment. So simply click start configuration. And I'm going to call this again, AWS dev cluster one. And I'm going to choose our new cloud provider that we just created. And I'm going to come through and choose US West one. I'm going to put all my nodes in a single availability zone. And I'm going to come here, scroll down and choose an SSH key to use for deploying each of those instances. Now, here we have some choices to make. Do we want to use a template where we have a single master and worker node, where we have one master, maybe three worker nodes, or do we want a larger cluster? I'm just gonna to go to a mid-sized cluster here. It's gonna use a T2 medium type. I imagine that most of the time that you're doing this, you're probably gonna choose custom and choose the exact instance types that makes sense for the workload that you're running. But let's go back to using the medium template here. Next step is to choose which Kubernetes version that we wanna use. I'm gonna go with 121, and I'm gonna deploy using the container D runtime. No point making a cluster on a runtime that's going to be deprecated in a coming Kubernetes release. This is another sort of important step, Route 53. If you are using Route 53 in AWS, click this box and then choose one of the domains that you have listed. If not, like myself, I'm just gonna pass over this step. Uh, I do not want to run workloads on my master nodes and I do wanna run privileged containers. The next step here is looking at our managed add-ons. I'm going to turn on etcd backup. I'm gonna deploy our Prometheus monitoring. I'm gonna deploy our auto scaling and, and I'm gonna enable the profile agent. The profile agent is a piece of software that allows you to standardize role-based access controls across all of your clusters. You can make a template, customize of it, and then deploy it across any number of clusters that you build using Platform 9. All right, for etcd backup, location, 
I'm going to do a daily. I'm going to tell it to keep three, and let's keep going. Monitoring config, retention time, seven days. Seems pretty good. Min number of workers, one. Max number of workers, three. This will configure the cluster audio scaler. Next, I'm going to take the fast path here. I am just going to choose create new VPC. That means that everything for the cluster is managed entirely by platform nine. And you delete the cluster, it's going to clean all of these aspects up as well. Next are options around your container cider and service cider ranges. Once again, I'm going to leave those as a default. Cluster CNI, I am going to choose Calico. That is my personally preferred option. Scroll down and click next. Next, we have a set of advanced configurations. Each one of these configurations really allows you to tune to quite a high extent how you want this Kubernetes cluster to run. I am not going to change any of these defaults. Um, if you are a Platform 9 customer and you want to start tuning some of these, I'd highly recommend reaching out to support first and having a discussion about why you're changing them and where you want to go. So. With leaving all of these as the default, I am just going to click Next. Now I'm finishing review. I'm going to click Complete. That's going to go off. It's going to connect to your AWS account and start creating that cluster. And there we go. The cluster is now creating. Depending how many nodes, what type of nodes, and if you chose a custom AMI or anything like that, this could take a few moments. Um, anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes is completely normal. And that's how you make a cluster using Platform 9 and AWS. All right, our cluster is built. We can see here on the node health page, what this shows us is each of the nodes that are in the cluster and the ability to look at each step that we've taken to create this cluster. This is a master node, so it has 21 different steps. This page is quite useful at any point in time if you're looking at a cluster and maybe one of the components is not responding as healthy. Come to the node health page, find that node, click on view steps, and see if there's one of these steps that we're going through to auto heal that node in the cluster. It's a great way to be able to quickly view and understand what's going on. It's a great way to view and understand what's going on, and then work with support to rectify this problem in your environment. So let's take a look at this cluster. Obviously at the top here, we can see its status and resource utilization. This is an aggregate across all nodes. We can open the Grafana dashboard. That's part of the Prometheus monitoring stack that we deployed. We can open up the Kubernetes dashboard if you so like to drill into that. And we can also download a Kubeconfig, but more on that later on. Let's click on nodes. Here we can see all the nodes in the cluster. We can see all of their statuses. And there are a few going on here. Let's start on the far left. The connection status represents each node's connectivity back to the Platform 9 SaaS management plane. If this is down, obviously we're not able to report any status information on the cluster, so it's pretty important. The next piece are all of the individual Platform 9 components. These are things like our host agent that helps establish and secure the connectivity back to the SaaS management plane. They might be other aspects like Nodelet, which is our open source bootstrap provider for building Kubernetes clusters. Could also be the comms tunnel that we establish for the outbound connectivity to the SaaS management plane. If each one of these is good, this will be represented as healthy and green. If any one of those is failing, you will see a corresponding degraded status. The next two columns are coming directly from the Kubernetes cluster itself. What is the status of our API server? Obviously, if you have multiple control plane nodes, you'll see this represented multiple times. And then the Kubernetes node status. Obviously, if any of these are not in a ready state, you'll be unable to schedule workloads. Moving on, we can view our cluster details tab. This is a representation of all the configuration that you set up to create this cluster. Continuing through here, we can see any deployed apps. You have the ability to leverage Platform 9's SaaS hosted Helm service connect a number of Helm repositories, and then go forth and deploy applications into that cluster. Obviously, new cluster, no apps. Next are our add-ons. Add-ons represent the health and status of the add-ons that we put in a cluster. So you can see here, profile agent, which we discussed, the cluster autoscaler is also an add-on that we manage, and then other critical applications such as core DNS and the metric server. And 
we can see here etcd backup is in an error state obviously not great each one of these can also be edited and customized if you want to do that we can click on the edit add-ons and we'll look at that in a little bit the last step here is to look at alarms and there we go we actually have an alarm that's firing here so let's scroll down and see what that's about we can see already here that we have a failed scheduling to get more information about this simply just click on the link and you'll see the slide out is providing information about exactly what's going wrong in this cluster so we can see here that we have a problem with Calico Typha and it's unable to schedule because of a taint that is missing on that node. It's as easy as that. There's a number of built-in alarms, rules, metrics, and scrape endpoints that are part of that monitoring deployment. And this is an example of one of them firing straight away as soon as that cluster has been built. So now we've had a chance to see how to build a cluster and understanding all of the dashboard components around looking at the health of a cluster and understanding how it's running. Let's take a bit of a broader tour of platform nine. So back to the dashboard. Here we can see we now have one cluster of four nodes and one cloud account. Let's click edit, come in here, choose the elements I'd like to have, click save, and then that will update. I like to keep it nice and simple. So I'm just gonna stay with my clusters, nodes, and cloud accounts. To Administer the, the platform itself. What you need to do is click on your avatar and then come here and click on admin settings. This is where we put all of the configurations around users and groups that are inside of your Platform 9 instance. It's where you come to set up your single sign-on as well as white label this by changing the color themes or bringing in your own company logo. All of these settings live within the admin interface here as well as your user settings. So if you want to change your display name, update your password, or maybe change your theme, this is where you can do it. So let's get back to the rest of the product. Two options here, I can click back to dashboard or I can click on our application switcher and navigate to one of the other services that we have running within Platform 9. Let's say I'm running on-prem and I want to do kubevert, this is where you would come to set that up or your looking at setting up a bare metal cloud in your data center or an edge location, you could come here and work with Metal Cubed. The next option within here is Argo CD. And we're gonna jump on to this in just a moment. Argo CD runs as a SaaS service within Platform 9. Each user's instance has a dedicated instance of Argo CD. If I click launch, I'll be able to log in and start deploying apps through Argo CD. But what we're gonna do now is spend a little bit more time looking at what's going on in the world of Kubernetes. So on the left here, I can drill into my Kubernetes workloads, my storage that's been set up for a cluster, my Helm applications and repositories that are attached or deployed. I can drill into a dedicated view of monitoring for each cluster I have running and its associated deployment monitoring. I can come in and set up a RBAC profile for my cluster, or I can come in and edit my RBAC that's running on the cluster itself. So let's start there. RBAC's always a little bit of a finicky thing to work with in Kubernetes. So we've made a visual way to start editing that and understanding what's going on. For example, if I wanna look at a role binding, very easy to come in, choose role bindings. Let's choose metric server auth reader and click edit. We're gonna to connect to that cluster and pull back information about it. So I can see the cluster, the namespace and the role that's there. If I want to understand what's going on in that role, it says copy that. Coming over here to roles, paste this into search. And there it is. Comes up in the search results. I can click on that. I can click edit. And now I can see exactly the API group, the resources, and then each verb that's in there. If I wanted to edit this, I can click edit and I can update it. Super easy. This style of working with Kubernetes continues through the application. So if I choose workloads, I can come in here, I can see all my pods, deployments, services, and cron jobs. I can then say, drill into alert manager to understand what's going on. I can see its labels, its annotations. I can see the containers. I can drill into them to get a little bit more information about those containers. I can navigate back using the breadcrumbs at the top here. And if there's any ingress, PVCs or config maps associated, they're all represented here as well. 
I can see also that there's two services. If I click these, it's gonna take me to them directly. And as you can see, we've kept it very consistent. With each navigation, you're gonna see a lot of the same tabs. We've done this to make it super easy to start learning Kubernetes and understand what's going on. If I wanna edit the YAML of one of these objects, because I have the RBAC policies to do that, I can click YAML, I can come in here and edit it. I can then scroll to the bottom and click save, and that will actually update this resource on the cluster in real time. If I want to look at any of the logs for the pods that are associated with this service, I don't have to go and run different kubectl commands or go back to that pod view. There, here, if there's multiple pods associated, I can drip, drill down and switch those up. Or in this case, I've got multiple containers and both of the log files are represented here with a very quick way to either copy and paste them to share with your colleagues or maybe download and post in a Slack message. Say, hey guys, troubleshooting a problem, what's going on, please help. Um, all these views have been set up for both DevOps and IT ops teams to work with Kubernetes clusters, but also importantly for developers to start working with those applications and learning Kubernetes quickly. And as I mentioned, all of this is based off of that individual user's role-based access control and their specific access to the cluster. So if you don't want them editing anything, don't give them those permissions. And when they come into Platform 9, they won't be able to do that. So now we've seen how to work with applications that are running in a cluster and how Platform 9 can help all user types. Let's look at how we can leverage Argo CD as a service to deploy new apps and really kickstart our cloud native journey. So let's click the app switcher, go to Argo CD and click launch. This is opening up the login screen, click login and use exactly the same credentials as you do logging into Platform 9. This instance of Argo CD is dedicated to, to you. There's nothing shared here, this is not multi-tenanted. Now the first thing you're gonna notice is there's no applications. So the first step that we wanna take is to deploy a new app. Pretty simple to get started. Let's give it a, a name, I'm gonna call this Redis. I'm going to choose the default project. Uh, Argo CD does have a, a concept of, of tenancy. And I'm going to just let the sync policy here. I'm going to choose automatic. This is really sort of pushing into that GitOps style way of working with a, an application on the Kubernetes cluster. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to choose this repository URL. And I'm going to say deploy Redis from apps slash Redis. Then I'm gonna come and choose my destination cluster. And I'm gonna put this in the default namespace. And that's it. This is the first steps in getting started with GitOps and starting to leverage Argo CD to deploy applications into your cluster. I'm gonna click create. Argo CD is gonna reach out to the repo, pull up the details, connect to the cluster and start that deployment process. And as you can see, that's already deployed super fast. It's in sync to the, to the repository. It's in the process of deploying and now it's running. I can very quickly drill in and see that I now have an Argo CD application deployed. Its name is Redis. It's got a config map and here I've got its pod. What else can I do? Super quick, you can click in here and look at that application as it's deployed. You can see any events that this application went through in terms of deploying onto the, the cluster. And importantly, you can view the manifest, which is going to really help when you want to start digging into some of the features that Argo CD has for looking at drift in an environment. And you can, through, you can view that through pods and down here, simply selecting diff. And as you can see that my live manifest on the cluster and my desired manifest are exactly in sync. Another way to view this application is go back to Platform 9 and go into our Kubernetes view. I'm gonna to go to Workloads and filter my namespace to default. Hit Refresh and I can see my Redis deployment. What this means is you can choose who has access to which way of interacting with applications. Do they get read-only into Argo and that's it? Do they have access to Platform 9 as well? or do they have both or some blend there in between. Clicking, I can drill in, I can see the events, I can see the log files, and I can also see the YAML. And that's it. 
that's our introduction to Platform 9 and a overview of building a cluster, using our platform and adding users and doing some administrative tasks and leveraging Argo CD to deploy an application. Thank you very much for your time.